Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Grandmaster Dennis Borosh and today we're going to look at a fantastic game by Dorsa Darakshani, just played in the US Championships. And this game is actually fantastic because of the depth of preparation that Dorsa put in and you shall see how it worked out. D4, E5, this was played between Darakshani and Jennifer Yu. Quite an epic game and an important one as Jennifer Yu is also among the favorites. Now this footage is made on the day of the finals. So we yet to know who will be the winner, even though Derek Shani is in the running for the title. So making the first few moves is nothing special. Here Derek Shani avoids straight up Petrov in the Russian defense, bishop b4, and she plays a3 which is quite a strange move. Usually, everybody takes on e5, castles, and knight d3, where this is supposed to be slightly better for white. However, a3 is based on a deep home preparation by Dorsa team. As she explained after the game, this is the idea of her brother thinking that Jennifer Yu is not too comfortable with sacrifices on the king side. But let's take a look what happened. Bishop takes c3, d takes c3, castle, bishop g5. Very strong move, actually preparing these ideas. Pinning, which, as some say, almost winning. h6, bishop h4, g5. And this was actually, believe it or not, was part of Dorsa Darakshani's preparation. She anticipated that Jennifer Yu has trouble finding the correct timing of playing g5. This actually happened in her previous game where Jennifer Yu faced Carissa Yip and the same sacrifice actually netted a win and later on the title for Carissa Yip in the junior championships. So boom, here goes knight takes g5. King takes g5, bishop takes g5. Actually, this is a very typical sacrifice, but it has a lot of merit. It puts pressure on the queen and the knight on f6. Not to mention, the king got much, much weaker without the pawn shelter on g7 and h6. She played king g7, and the big move from Dorsa Darakshani is really h4. Because not only does this defend the bishop on g5, it sets up threats like queen f3, queen g3. There's no knight h5 ideas anymore. Also the same threat on f6. And the plan of rook h3, rook g3 just lining up. And the third plan, which we shouldn't forget about, is h5, h6, trying to destabilize the king on g7. d6 h5, she starts roaming down with her pawn, she's trying to harass that king on g7, bishop e6, f4, trying to open up the position, which is well in the style of the position. Notice there's no knight d7, which is the move that Jennifer Yu is aiming for, because that would end up trapping this bishop on e6, which is a big issue. So she is forced to take, but here comes rook h4, and the rook is actually coming in the game with full force, attacking the f6 knight. Knight d7, rook takes f4, rook h8, and g4 is quite a solid move, just making sure that everything's defended. Sadly for Jennifer Yu, there's no way out of this pin, and whenever the queen would move, you run into ideas such as takes, takes, queen d4, the queen arrives and this is typical queen of the hill situation there is not much black can do and g5 is deadly setting up some devastating ideas on f6 h6 would run into g5 and you're not only forked you're even losing the f6 pony so here or not she had to go queen e7 but here she comes queen of the hill plays queen d4 presses down this diagonal, that diagonal, and these pawns are threatening to be pushed with the same direction. The main threat is to take on f6, then play g5, and then this square is just going to be extra, extra weakened. And that is kind of 
the main issue. And this is a position that deserves a diagram of some sort. As black is completely paralyzed, black can't really move. The king is just misplaced, such as the queen on e7. And black is basically busted because the queen on the hill is just making sure there's no move for black. C5 trying her best which is a good practical try from Jennifer Yu. But after queen f2, the threats remain the same. Threats on f6, you still cannot really take because at the end of the day, you would just weaken your king and would expose it to future attacks. So rook g8, bishop h3. Now bishop h3 is an interesting move. At first sight, when I was looking and watching this game live, I would have assumed to put the bishop on e2, not only to provide shelter for this king, but to overprotect the pawns on g4 on h5. But her move, Dorsa's move on a bishop h3, makes sense as well as she's trying to put pressure on these pieces later on after a future take on f6. f8, bishop takes f6, takes, takes f6. And this is a big success for Dorsa so far as she not only won a pawn, in the process but she also has targets on d6 and f7 with an attack still going on on the f5 bishop g4 bishop g4 rook g4 castles always always put your king into safety even if you're attacking rook takes h5 rook takes fd6 and this is a triumph and even though she's going to lose the e pawn the attack is much more valuable than the pawn amount and the pawn quantity. Rook f6, queen e7, rook f1. A semi alakine's gun is built by Dorsa and after a safe move as king b1, she is going to have decisive threats. Rook g7, 1, 5, rook h6, just probing for some threats, trying to move this g7 rook away. King e8, Run away from danger, but it ain't running too far. After queen d2, that king is cut off, and there are multiple threats that she has to deal with, plus the time trouble she was in. That is Jennifer Yu. Queen d7, but this is a decisive mistake, which is understandable as she was under heavy pressure. Rook d6, queen e7, rook d1, and now after doubling and tripling on the f file, she's tripling on the queen side with decisive threats as there is no way of stopping rook d8 if king f8 then just rook d8 check and if queen c7 as was played it's rook d8 7 7 check and it's interesting to point out how this game went for dorsa darakshani she played a very very inspired opening an opening kind of anticipating psychological problems that Jennifer Yu has with this g5 sacrifice she manages to catch her in that very moment plays the sacrifice and follows up flawlessly and then comes up the queen d4 queen f2 plan just putting pressure all the way long and it was a very very clean game by Dorsa Darakshani which actually propelled her to second place as she is going to continue her journey and her campaign for the final day and maybe for the title. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this, definitely comment down below. Take care and see you next time.